So I didn't plan on doing this video, but after I got the binding off and without any string tension on it, the neck is loose as you can, hopefully you can see this. It's, it's so loose that I'm, I don't think I'm gonna have to use steam. These double cuts, all Gretches, well, not all. Every Gretch I've ever come across with the uh, plug on the bottom is a pocket joint. If it were a dovetail, it would be here. And again, these started in 1958 where they, uh, where they started to use, I don't know what they call it, the neck lock system or something, where they screw the, put a screw in there so the necks don't fall out. They don't fall out, but they're, <laughs> they can be very loose and, uh, and have issues like this one. You'll also see here where the, the binding rod has stained, uh, permanently stained the finish just because of the chemical reaction. And in some of the pictures, you can see too that the green, uh, uh, it's like electrolysis, the green on the metal is a result of the, the reaction. So what I do to take this, this is a piece, this is an ebony dowel, dowel I said dowel, ebony plug. It's a very small plug with a pretty significant, this one should have a, uh, a slot head screw, we'll see in a second. I take a drill, I've changed how I do this. I used to take a Forstner bit and, and do the whole plug. What I do now is I, I, I try to save the plug by, by using a small drill bit. And, and I drill into the center of, of the plug. And if you're lucky, you can take a small screw and you can, you can um, put it in there like I'm gonna do and pull it out and save it. And then you just have to plug the center where this is. And you can see what happens is it raises it around the edges. And then with some luck, you can you can help it out. But if that doesn't happen, you just cut another ebony plug, which could very well be the solution here. Yep, there it is. And so it's intact. Um, I'll just have to, to get some ebony dust, put it in there with some super glue and make that happen. There is the slot head screw. I use a number four screwdriver, slot head. I like these. Uh, Klein screwdrivers a lot because they're sharp. They have sh the Phillips heads are super sharp and easy to work with. Um, these usually have glue in the in the uh, in the screw, glue in the screw. But I prefer to do this by hand rather than using a uh, a power tool. which in most cases works better because you can feel the resistance and, and you have an idea of what, you know, if you're forcing it, then something will typically um, bad happen. Something breaks, something then you have to go back and fix later. Try to avoid that. And that's the screw that they use. With a little luck, this neck will pop right out. Which is good for everybody because 
it makes my job easier. I think it's, it, now I don't have to wait two weeks for this to, to, for the steam to go. This has been reset before. Somebody reset this. Um, there's a combination of maple and mahogany that they use to, to set this. In my opinion, and, and some might not agree, you should never shim with shim and shim because this now you have one, two, three glue surfaces, which I think causes a lot of these failures. Even though the shim is um, a little more than a sixteenth sixteenth of an inch, I would guess on one side. Having, two, I mean, the perfect situation would be that this fits perfectly in uh, the mortise and tenon joint, but. The, but when you start getting too many glue surfaces, there's too many possibilities for it to fail. And fail it did. Uh, but it's out. There it is. Everything's dry. This could be cleaned up. These shims taken off. One shim per side put back on. Getting the proper... Um, one thing that people do that I've come across a lot of gretches, which is it's stupid they you know they're because the break angle off of the bridge is too low and and what you should do if that's the case is you need to shave um the angle you have to increase the down angle to increase the break angle at the bridge so they cheat and they'll put a shim under here and this will be you'll have this gap in here you don't which you don't want this because all you're doing is yeah you're raising the string action but you're losing the transmission of sound through here and through and through the body of the guitar so when you do this and if you have to increase the brake angle you you, uh, you trim this part down so that you you're able to increase that these frets are, are pretty green because of the, the binding rot, but I think they're high enough and I'll easily clean them up. And yes, this had notches and I'll, when I do the binding, when I complete the binding, I'll go over um, how you put notches in. I know the custom shop does it with a power tool. Uh, I won't do that on a vintage guitar because it's too scary. Um, you'll see I'll use, use a razor blade, but just want to show that part. See ya.